As we think about that vocabulary of our faith, the one sacred word that has so much potential to change us is the word neighbor, especially how Jesus uses it. That we might think back to the story of the Good Samaritan where the individual was harmed, lying on the side of the road, needing some sort of help from somebody. And then the priest comes and walks by without offering help. And then a Levite comes by and walks past the individual without offering help. Finally, it was a Samaritan that came down the road and stopped to offer help. Now this stunned those that were listening to Jesus tell the story because Samaritans were the subject of so much prejudice. They were seen as inferior to others, more of a problem than anything else. But the neighbor in the story is the Samaritan, that Jesus will not let us limit who our neighbor is or who our neighbor is not. So how do we say this word that has so much potential to impact our lives and the world around us? Perhaps we say it too quickly, that it rolls off the tongue too fast, that we never give it enough time to feel the full weight of what Jesus means when he says, love your neighbor as yourself. Perhaps it's one of those things that we do not completely learn until we try to pass it along to others. There is that wonderful lesson where the teacher ends up learning more than the student. That if we ever sit down to help our child with math homework, just basic algebra, that we sit down and we scratch our head and we work through the headache and we go through the lesson once and twice or three times until we finally understand it. Because we can now teach it to somebody else. Or maybe it's running lines with a friend who's in a community play. That as we go through the lines, helping our friend learn her lines, that before we know it, we could be an understudy for the play. That we have absorbed what they mean. Or maybe it's that phone call we get and someone asks us, to become a Sunday school teacher, or even just to fill in for a couple Sundays here or there. And at first, there is fear and trembling that we do not feel confident enough in what we know of the Bible to call ourselves a teacher. But for some reason, we say yes. And we sit down during that first weekend before our first lesson and we read the story of Scripture and what the commentaries say and what other teachers have said. And all of a sudden, it makes sense because now we are teaching it to somebody else. That perhaps we need to slow down how we say love your neighbor as yourself. For us to completely absorb everything that that sacred word means. To ask ourselves, who is the neighbor in our story? Who is the Samaritan in our life? the person that we would never consider to be our neighbor. 
but who is. That that phrase, love your neighbor as yourself, has more power to it than we realize. It changes how we see others, how we see ourselves, and even how we see God. That we say that word neighbor carefully. We say it thoughtfully. We say it prayerfully to feel the full weight of how Jesus said it. The English word neighbor comes from the words nigh, meaning near, and the word jabur, meaning dweller. So in a very literal sense, it is the person dwelling near you. But Jesus stretches this word beyond its literal meaning, that neighbors include the family that lives two doors down from us, but so much more that we are not able to exclude anyone from the way Jesus said the word neighbor. Our family has lived in three different states and three different towns over the last some 20 years. In every town, every place and its people is a little different. They all have their idiosyncrasies. That in Mississippi, when your neighbor came and knocked on your door, bringing you a a plant or a flower or uh, a candle to thank you for something or to let you know that they were thinking about you, they would say, I'm just bringing you a little happy. When our neighbors in Georgia invited us out to lunch to go to the barbecue place down the road, it was usually vinegar-based, chopped pork in a hamburger bun eaten as a sandwich with a side of Brunswick stew. And then in Alabama, when you move into a neighborhood and you meet the family next door, they usually ask you who your football team is, and there's only two possible answers. And depending on your answer, the other half of the state thinks you're always wrong, that every place, every people is different. And those small differences point us and remind us of the larger differences, the differences of race, culture, the differences of ethnicity and beliefs. But there is something that we all hold in common. And that is what Jesus saw in the meaning of neighbor. It is our humanity. That every place, every people is different in many ways. But if we see the meaning of the word neighbor in the way Jesus said it, the definition of that word just keeps getting wider. That there are no limits to it. It is anyone and everyone who is in need. It's the stranger that we pass downtown. It is the refugee halfway around the world. It's the person who looks different from us. It is the rich and the poor. It is every race and ethnicity, it is every difference we can imagine. Saint Ignatius once said, be kind to everyone you meet because everyone you meet is fighting a great battle. And we do not need any statistical analysis to let us know that that is a true statement. We know it is true based on our experience in this life. That everyone we meet, those who are like us, 
and those who are not like us. Those that we like and those that we do not like. That every single one of them is fighting a great battle. That the word neighbor is about need, not nearness. And Jesus knew that we are more inclined to help those who are like us. But the definition of neighbor will not let us draw the circle that small. It continues to widen our understanding of this world. So we start imagining the other person's battle. And we realize, no matter how different we are or how much we disagree, we both have need. That we are neighbors. So we are called to help even if it makes us uncomfortable, even if it requires us to give of ourselves, even or especially if it has the power to change who we are because the other person is always our neighbor. And that is what the Good Samaritan does. And it is what Jesus does. And it is what we are called to do. Amen.